Okay, y'all. Final video of the night. I'm telling you, I know I look toe up on the floor. If y'all gonna be able to really just talk about a whole now, it's good. Child, two jobs plus YouTube. And coming up off of sickness. And being a loop of survival. Bitch. Mm, mm, mm. I'm motherfucking tired. Okay? But here we go. Have and have not, honey. Season 5, episode 10. Forget the bubble. We gonna... I'm going to just give it to y'all straight from what little piece of notes I made and what I can recall, child. We start off with Hannah. She back down at that police station yet again. And this person goes to get none other than old Justin to come talk to Hannah. But before he can do it, he back there dealing with the overzealous ass rookie from the week before. And um, he trying to figure out what's going on. You know, according to him, he did his job as he was instructed to do. And uh, he didn't know they was supposed to be friends. All he trying to do is put his kid through school and survive around these parts, okay? So, rookie, stop asking questions before you wind up missing, okay? So, he go to talk to Hannah after he finally get rid of old rookie cop. And she says she want to tell him where her daughter is. But she want to know how are they going to come to get her. Are they going to come in there uh, busting through the door, gun drawn? Now, if you worried about all of that, why you down there snitching on your daughter, Hannah? See... Y'all, I'm telling you, I can't deal with this self-righteous ass handle sometime. I'm trying to tell you. He said if they feel it's necessary, yeah, they would do that. Now, he saw her struggling and said he'll go ahead on and talk to his boss. You know, maybe they can work something out so that they don't come to her all aggressively like that. Then she says something that further let me know that Hannah need the real Jesus. I don't know who she praying to and who she worshiping, but the real Jesus is a, a Jesus. A, he's a God of order and he's a God of sense. Hannah ain't got no sense at all. She going to ask them folks. He go, she going to ask him, can they let her walk out the building and walk over to the corner or meet her outside? <laughs> Hannah, this is the motherfucking police, honey. Girl, uh, look like the gate, the geese are getting away from my home. But anyway, she say, I, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to understand what's her problem because, girl, this is the police. If you ain't want your daughter to be implicated or you didn't want to tell these people nothing about your daughter, then why the hell did you go down here to this police station and get to running your damn mouth about you know where she is? Because now you got to tell them. And she wound up finally telling him the fountain drop room number 17. I'm like, shit, you might as well because you implicated yourself now into this mess Justin, Justin asked her do she know why Quincy was killed and she get to tell me I know like he ain't got no reason to ask you that question if, again if you ain't had your ass down here at this police station snitching you wouldn't have to deal with this kind of questioning he say what kind of person is he she get to tell me he a horrible person and naming the stuff he done did from stealing or running his car through her house um, she also tell him to check his rap sheet, you know, you'll be able to tell what kind of person he is. She say he pure evil, okay? So he say, what kind of relationship did he have with your daughter? She said abusive. He abused her and he abused her grandson. So Justin asked, is that why she killed him? Now she goes into this big tirade about she ain't said that, that ain't what she down here saying, you know, uh, but, uh, girl, he doing his job. He's supposed to ask you all that. She said, all I'm saying is that if she did do it, it was self-defense. So Hannah knew she messed up at that point. She leaving. She's sitting in that car. And I'm wondering which one of them guards she reaching out to because she going to need one of them in a minute, okay? <laughs> Pray on that, church woman. Now, Justin called Jeffrey, but he don't answer the phone. So he texts him and basically say, look, Candace, young mama done came down here and she done told all of y'all business. And I done took a peek at the medical examiner's report. And it does say that he was killed by two people, one of them being a male. So what you might want to ought to do is get your conversation together because 
they're going to be wanting to talk to you soon. He realizes at that point he texting too much and going to say, send him another text talking about he need to talk to him. Who phone is he texting from? Mm. Let's talk about Charles, uh, the presidential uh, elect that, that, that we we dealing with, okay? He down at the hotel still drinking with Candace, and she offering him more, and he talking about, uh, is she trying to get him drunk? She, he, she said, I'm trying to keep you drunk. Then he gets to talking about being the presidential candidate and how once he gets in his White House, how he's going to feel somewhat uh, in a bubble and suffocate. He won't be able to do nothing, including what they're doing right now. He said he don't really he don't know if he prepared to go into this bubble and she says she can see the struggle. That's why she's trying to relax him and keep him on an even keel. So he asked what she wanted to do. She said what you want to do. Charles tell us that he only been with one woman and that was his wife. And he was married to her for fifteen years. So it would just be him and his two kids going into this White House. And Candace, like kids, he said, yeah. He gave the ages and stuff. And she said, hmm, I can understand. I'm ready to settle down, get my degree, and start making money, too. Well, he said to her that he don't think that he can do this. Just, um, he just met her. And it won't be good for his image to just have sex with her like that. It wouldn't be good for his reputation. And she flipped that shit on him real good. The gift of gab. It keeps on giving, honey. She told him, what makes you think that it won't be detrimental to my reputation? And he looking confused. So she broke that shit down. She said, I'm working my ass out. I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to come from the bottom to the top, uh, homeboy. I would hate to think that once I get to my, my resting spot, my peace that passes all understanding, my just dues in life, to have people think that I didn't get here by way of work and determination. I got here by way of sleeping with the most powerful man in the free world. See, that could be bad for my reputation, too. And he had to realize and accept the fact she made a bad point. Like I said, they give to Can uh Gab is what Candace Scott. And she said it flat out, you could ruin my reputation. Child, this thing I know, she on top of him, straddling him, titties in his face, and all of a sudden this conservative um I'm 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 so meek and demure. I, I don't do all these type of things, type of dude done flipped the script on us and he flipped her ass over too and child he went to work <laughs> now let's go over to veronica how could she over there with that bullshit she watching jeffrey jeffrey still standing there on that step like him want to go on up in that room with melissa said. she come out there and tell him how long you gonna stand there boy go on up in there with her and do what you gotta do well he complies and goes in the room and poke thing melissa poke thing. She trying to talk to him, but y'all know Jeffrey see her as alien, honey. He rude and telling her to leave him alone and don't talk to him. He just, you know, he just plain mean to the girl. She tried to get close, but not in a sexual way. He told her, get up off me. You don't really care about me. She talking about, I do care, and he needs to open up to someone and talk. She was, um, Asking what was going on between him and Justin. Because she was in the window too, apparently. And it appears that, clearly, he's somebody to him because he all upset now. And he's saying she don't really care. But she pleading that she does. And I kind of believe this girl because she really wasn't looking for all this. She just won't take care of her daddy. That's all this girl wanted. Jeffrey's so man, he don't realize that they share this similarity. They both under Veronica's control right now, and it would be wiser, you know. You catch more flies with honey than you do be with Veronica. And then on top of that, honey, if you and her in the same boat, won't y'all work together? Because y'all gonna need each other, because Veronica don't play. She don't play. Um... He get the child, instead of him just deciding to go ahead and talk to her, he decide he want to act a fool. You know, you know how he do. He going to tell her, okay, that was my love. And you know what? You know what we do? 
we make hard, passionate love, and I can feel, you know, his ass feel like steel, and his hard rock, sweaty chest against mine. She stopped him right now. She stopped him right there, honey. Please spare me the details of all of that. I said you could talk to me. I said you can just go into detail and put all your business out on Front Street, honey. He going to tell her that, um, He told her he on a roll, and uh, he said, uh, just thinking about it make him rock hard. And Tyler, let me tell you something. Tyler, Tyler Perry, you is feeding into the inner freak that I try to keep asleep, okay? Last week, you got David getting rock hard. This week, Jeffrey talking about his manhood hard. And child, all I kept thinking in my head was, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. It that While that scene was playing, I was thinking, 12 play, give me a little. Child, I'm telling you, that, that, that inner, that inner, that enter up through him, okay? Stop playing, Tyler. Child, he took his hand and put it on, took her hand and put it on his manhood and said, See, I get hard for him, but I get soft for you. And pushed her hand away and told her to get up off of him. At this point, baby, next thing we know, the door open and it's Veronica. And she drunk and not feeling what she didn't overheard Jeffrey saying. She telling his ass, you know, are you done? Are you done telling your little nasty stories and your love about your love affairs, Miss Thing? Are you done? Poor Melissa, she tried to help. She said, I think that if he want to be with him, maybe he ought to be able to do that. She told her, shut up, bitch. I don't pay you to think. She told Jeffrey, you might as well forget Justin cancel it out because she ain't having it, honey. She said, the only good thing, she told Melissa. She said, the only thing you good for is popping out my grandkids. And then she told Jeffrey, she said, you know what? She a good enough looking woman. She got a few stretch marks. We could work it out. And she could be a little bit shade dark. And I was like, you better represent for the brown girls, Veronica, bitch. I was here for you. That's right, because you know in society, they always equate beauty with being light. And that's the only way it's right. But, Veronica, I was here for you because big up in... For big up in the dark skinned women, cause she say she could be a little darker, but we gonna go and work with her, okay? Baby, all of a sudden Jeffrey hauled off and said, Bobby save me. And Veronica hold the me of change. <laughs> she talking about I just care about it. I just wanna help you. Now he go back to Let's go back because Bobby Saberman, if you all remember, when Jeffrey took the knife to her, her implant, <laughs> the pair of knife, and she was down at that hospital, remember David said that that dude Bobby kept pushing Jeffrey and he snapped. Hmm. Baby, she was shook by that Bobby reference. She heard up and got the hell up out of there. So, uh, but Melissa is telling him, she like, look, you got a couple of hours. She going to go down there. She already drunk. She going to pass out. But she won't come back up here until about 4 a.m. So it give you time. Jeffrey still being a bitch ass nigga right now. He going to say uh, he don't need her help. But I beg different. Baby, y'all best work together <laughs> against this woman here. She then apologizes. She tell him, look, all I wanted was to get my dad some treatment to get through school so I can get me a job and I can take care of my family. She said, I did not know that it was this bad. He said, well, at least you don't have jail hanging over your head. And she said, jail? He said, yeah. He, she said, for what? He said, because I murdered somebody and she was just looking. He said, you don't look like you surprised. She said, she with a mama like yours. I'm surprised you ain't no serial killer. <laughs> Girl, I screamed. <laughs> He said, that's not funny, and she apologized and asked, look, ain't she, in, she got you in the wheel, you know, I don't need nothing but some schooling and, and, and my daddy treatments and stuff. He said, I ain't finna do nothing to my mama. She said, I ain't mean it like that, but yes, you did, uh, Melissa, yes, you did, girl. You was thinking about taking old Veronica out. Please don't take Veronica out. We need her on these here good episodes of the Haves and Have Nots. We need our resident Evelyn. Leave Veronica alone.
Now we go over to the cry mansion because Jim on the phone with Oscar and Oscar moves quick, baby. He done found that son of his that wide and told Jim, look, he done paid three million dollars for an apartment that's only seven thousand dollars. Seven hundred thousand dollars. Jim said, What's the address? So Oscar give it to him and Jim said, I be see this the old building we used to own and we just renovated the building a couple of years ago. He said, Look, man, can you get my money back? Oscar said, with him making deals like this, it's going to be fairly easy, so it won't be hard. I'm going to get you coin. Then he calls that detective that had came over to the house and wanted him to do the wiring thing. He said, look, I'm down, okay? We can go ahead on and trap the tramp, but I want to do it my way. And he began to ask for those pictures back, and dude said no. Now, Jim is now looking out that window, and he noticed that his daughter Carl is sitting there in the front of the house, and Hannah's sitting in it. So he asking Catherine, you know, what what is uh, Hannah doing in Amanda car out front? She said, I gave her the car. Jim wasn't feeling that shit. He said, uh, no. <laughs> What's up with you exactly between you and Hannah? He was trying to act like the way he said it. You would have thought that Hannah and, and, and um Catherine got some things going on between them. But we all know it's just a mutual respect and a friendship that they've bonded over the years that she didn't work for the criers, okay? He said she not had he said he not she not leaving here in that car. Catherine said, I'll be damned because it's in her name, it's her car. So Catherine go outside and she asked Hannah, now Hannah, you ain't here to say it. You ain't here talking about selling this car, are you? She said, no, I need your help for something else, girl. I need a good criminal attorney for my children, Candace and Benny. Catherine say, I help Benny, but I ain't got nothing for your damn daughter. Uh... Hannah say, I know you won't you won't do it for Candace, but see this ain't for Candace. This is a favor for me. So Catherine couldn't say no, considering all they done been through. Hannah say her daughter got some shit with her, but her it's still her child. Catherine say she'll give Veronica on and Veron and Hannah was like, No. She said, Well, I can call Marty in the morning, but Veronica is the best one. And Hannah know Marty ain't want nothing either, and neither did Catherine know it too, because she could, he couldn't even help them get out of jail. She say Veronica the best. <laughs> the devil does wear Prada, don't it, bitch? Okay, so I guess she's going to help her find her a lawyer for her kids. Now let's go back to the hotel where uh, Charles uh, Obama is, and he trying to figure out what Candace has done to him because he ain't felt like that ever, okay? Candace say to him, I do what I do because I want my men to be pleased, okay? So he asked her how many men she done been with. She asked him how many women he done been with. He don't be wanting to get no answer. So he starts that, I'm sorry, we can't be together. No one can know about this. I'm conservative. My wife conservative. She would have never done this on the first night. You know, basically, from what I was getting, he was kind of like, now you done participated in the events. Clearly, you're satisfied because you just asked me what the fuck I did to you. But now you want to act like you above me and telling me you and your wife are conservative and y'all wouldn't do this type. Your wife would never have done this on the first night. And she say conservative, huh? Or y'all, were y'all closet freaks? Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. I got one better for you. Was she just wanting to be freaked? Oh, he got up in his damn feelings then. Baby, what's done in the dark always makes its way to the light. You can keep playing if you want to. He said he just can't let this go. You know, he just can't do this here. He gonna have to lead us along because it could ruin him. And that's when she produced that recording and said, he said he can't do it, but she said, but I can. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Told him her meter points down south toward here all the time. Candace don't get no fuck. She was trying to be cool with you. You coming to help that fuck shit. She need this, this money. So she gonna get your ass, okay? Next thing we see, and I had almost said, kind of forgot about this here, except for when I was talking about what David said. I forgot David was still in the bed with, uh, uh, fucking Erica and baby, they in there tearing it down. Tyler, you is really tapping into my interfree. Go ahead on main. I'm here for it. 
They getting it in, baby. Just getting it in. I was saying, you see Erica head pop up. And child who is across the room looking directly at them. War. So I guess we who assume that now I didn't I didn't never really think that she might really be dealing with war, but I just knew that this thing wasn't right. I knew this girl was up to some fuck shit, and now it looked like we finna find out exactly the story behind Miss Erica. Cause how the hell war get in your house in your uh hotel room unless and you got the key? You gave him the key, and then on top of that. What dealings do you have with a man you claim like was the cause of your sister dying? I was here for tonight's episode, even though I had to look at it, look at it on the replay, and I'm a little bit tired because it's after 1 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm trying to get this review up, but shit, at least I can sleep today and tomorrow, honey, because y'all know Black Ink Crew go with fuck shit Friday, so I, I did see it. I'll be back down here because I have a video I'm going to do. Um, geared toward the younger crowd. I got something I want to share with y'all. So I'm going to come back and down and do that video probably some point tomorrow. Um, I've already put up the review for Tangled and Twisted. And y'all, I think that's about it. I done been really trying to come back and come back strong. I hope that you all are you know, enjoying the reviews and the, the presentations that I'm giving to you uh, the last couple of days since I've been back. I appreciate everybody who stuck with, uh, uh you know, stuck with me and, and, and stayed here and was concerned about my well-being. As you can see, I am working my way back, child. I'm going to be all right in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing like coming back. To what you call home and when i'm down here talking to y'all on this recorder i feel like y'all is part of my home honey y'all family to me so remember the depth of your struggle will always determine the height of your success in the meantime in between time remember to like this video comment down there i always talk back and share this video on your social media sites um i'll see you guys tomorrow if not tomorrow see you thursday <sighs> Child, I'm on my way to be. Peace.